Well, the weather, believe it or not, is starting to warm up here in the city of Seattle, 80 degrees. It's on its way and the cherry blossoms are in full bloom and that means the real estate market is starting to hum as well. So in this video, we're going to talk about April 2023 market updates. So stay tuned and we're going to get you tuned in to what you need to know. Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Matthew Chapman and I'm a local realtor here in the greater Seattle region. I specialize in helping savvy sellers who want to sell right, who want to sell smart, as well as working with out-of-towners, state buyers looking to relocate to this region or perhaps you already live here and you're looking to move up into a bigger, better home for an investment or personal residence. I can help you as well. Now, if you're new to my channel, if you just take a moment and click subscribe right down below, that way you will get notified of any new content that is dropped on YouTube from me. You could also follow me at Chapman Holmes HQ. That's my hashtag and you will see more up-to-date information right there. So in today's video, we're going to look at what is actually happening in real time in April 2023 in this greater Seattle area market. We're going to look at what you need to know if you're a buyer. We're going to look at what maybe interest rates might do and we're going to talk about what is just going down on the streets what's the word on the streets real estate perspective because I know you hear a lot of stuff in the media these days but I want to tell you the real news so stay tuned for that as well so let's get right to it for April 2023 the market update I'm gonna read some statistics here for you it's divided up into the east side versus Seattle now again if you are new to this area and you've never watched my channel before you should know that the east side market refers really to the suburbs east of Lake Washington, and so that would be Bellevue, Redmond, Issaquah, Kirkland, Woodenville, Bothell, and there's some other surrounding suburbs right there. That refers to the east side market. Now, Seattle proper is actually made up of a little bit of over 50 neighborhoods in Seattle proper, and so these two markets are the ones that I serve, and they have different statistics to cover. So the east side, the median home price for April 2023 was just over 1.4 million dollars and that's compared to 1.7 million dollars last year at this time so that means that the sales prices have actually gone down about 17 percent from a year ago now last year at this time 85 percent of the homes were selling above asking it was like the wild wild west homes had multiple offers crazy bidding wars and a lot of that was driven by the interest rates at two and three percent but last month we had about 24 percent of the homes that were selling above asking and that's an increase from the month before and so that's typical this time of year we start to see more activity as the spring market gets underway but we still have very little inventory on the east side 1.1 months supply of inventory and that means that all the homes can get gobbled up by the buyers out there in just one month and in a typical normal market you see about three to four months is a balanced market where the power neither lies with the buyer or the seller. So what does that tell you right now? That we are still in a seller's market because of the very low inventory. Okay, I just want to read you about a paragraph here that is some valuable information and I want to make sure I get it right. So listen to this narrative, okay? Despite interest rates doubling over the past year and a half from 3% all the way to six and a half percent, the limited supply of homes on the market has actually helped maintain home prices. There's no supply of inventory, so it's actually helped to maintain these prices the way they are. And while home prices have decreased from about 17% from a year ago, and that's roughly $288,500, they've actually rebounded from December of this last year by about 9% or $112,000. As a result, mortgage payments have increased from $8,284, which was the principal and interest payment on a $1.7 million loan at 4.17%. They've increased all the way to $8,950, $59, which is the principal and interest payment on a $1.411500 million loan at an interest rate of 6.54%. So what does that tell you? That tells you that low inventory and interest rates are actually still driving this market in the east side. Now, 
let's look at the Seattle market. The Seattle median home sales price for April 2023 was $870,000. That's compared to a year ago, which was at $970,000. And so that is actually a decrease of about 10%. Last year at this time in the Seattle market, 71% of the homes sold above asking. And last month, only 33% of the homes sold above asking. And the Seattle market has about 1.1 month supply of inventory as well, the same as the east side. And so here is the narrative on the Seattle market. Since January 2023, prices have increased by 8% or $66,000 if you just look at it from January. But year over year, prices have decreased by 11% or $100,000 though mortgage payments have actually increased by about $800. So what does that tell you? You save a lot of money when the interest payments are lower. And just because prices have gone lower doesn't mean your mortgage payment is gonna be lower right now. But it also tells you that there's less competition right now, and we're gonna to get to that in a moment. So this actually might be a good time for a buyer. So let's talk about what is actually driving the real estate market right now in the greater Seattle region. And that happens to be interest rates and new listings taken. So first off, new listings taken are down about 19% from a year ago, and that means that pending sales are actually down about 25% from a year ago. So the question is, why aren't more listings coming on the market? And the reason for that is sellers really are not in panic mode. They know that they have this value in their home and they're just waiting for their values to go back up. And also, why would they want to sell unless they have a real critical reason to sell like they're moving out of state or they're getting a new job and they have to relocate because their interest rate is at two and three and sometimes maybe in the upper three percent. And so why would they want to sell when their interest rate is so low and they have to double and sometimes triple their interest rate right now? And so that is a recipe for sellers to actually hold on to their homes. Now, if we see interest rates go down to the low fives to the mid fives, we're expecting and experts are predicting that more inventory will come on the market. But that also means more buyers are going to be on the market and there's going to be increased competition during that time. But that is the narrative of the day is new listings taken are down and interest rates, as you know, are still up. So what are we seeing as a result of these drivers in the real estate market? You've heard the media, you've heard the speculation, you've seen the negativity out there, but is it all doom and gloom? And I'm here to tell you that in my last, three listings, we've had multiple offers. Buyer activity is strong. And the reason for that is because there's just not much inventory out there. And also buyers right now are starting to get used to the reality that interest rates will never go to two and 3% again. So that took a long time to settle in. Those days are goodbye, and we will probably never see that in our lifetime again. And so the new reality is becoming normal that these interest rates are not as actually scary as they seem to be. And they're actually more realistic numbers. And so buyers, as a result, are starting to come back to the table, and we're seeing multiple offers again. Now, we're not seeing the crazy bidding wars that we saw last year. We are seeing bidding wars, but they're not going 30 to 40% above ask. The more normal range for the rule of thumb, a general rule of thumb is five to 12% above asking. And then sometimes even with multiple offers, it lands at the asking price. So it's not as scary as, as it seems. But right now in this market, we are seeing two markets primarily. One is this fast paced market and the other is a slower market. And there's a different set of rules. If you're in the slower market, you have all this power as a buyer that you may not have in the competitive space. And any home that's a part of the slower market is a home that's been on the market for more than seven days. In the competitive space, a home comes on the market typically on a Wednesday or Thursday and they have an offer review date by Monday or Tuesday and then it's gone. So five to six days in that competitive space and that home usually has multiple offers or it's gone on the offer review date. So that is what's happening in the market right now. The other question I get is, Matt, when is the best time to buy? And it are we going to continue to see prices decrease? Should I wait for that to happen or what should I do? Should I buy now? And I say, well, let me get out my crystal ball, rub it, and survey says, I don't know. 
I don't know what's gonna happen in this market, but I can tell you from the history, the historical trends and what we're seeing now. And what we're seeing now is that home prices are starting to go up. And as I mentioned in this video, they've gone up since January. And so the trend is going upward not downward anymore. And if interest rates go down to the low fives, you can expect home prices to tick up even faster and more buyer demand to be there. So in my opinion, this is a really unique time for buyers because there's less frenzy, there's less competition. Yes, you're going to maybe be paying a higher interest rate, but my advice there is to marry the house and date the rate. Meaning you can refinance within a few months when interest rates go down and you could sit back and relax because you got that house with less frenzy, less competition. And so that is a great strategy to have if you're a buyer out there. But the next question begins is, Matt, when is the best time to buy? And in my opinion, it's again, it's about what history tells us. History tells us that the best time to buy in the Seattle market is actually late July or August. Now, people are always shocked by that. When I have clients coming in from out of town, they're like, Matt, isn't that the busiest time? Isn't that when they're the most competition and what you may not know about Seattle is that during that time everybody is out having fun everybody's in the Sun camping they have their mind on other things they're doing what they should be doing they're hiking they're swimming and real estate begins to take a back seat in those months and so that actually can be a sneaky time to buy is July and August. So let me know if you have any questions. If you're a buyer out there, I would love to help you out. Don't hesitate to reach out to me, my team and I. We would love to assist you on helping you discern what your next best step is. I'm Matt Chapman and I'll see you next time.